Everyone knows that coffee is one of the most delicious, heartwarming, and soul-filling drinks around. But what do you really know about it? This drink has a history that you probably don't know, so we figured it was time for us to fill you in a bit and show you just what your favorite beverage is all about. Brew yourself a cup of joe, then sit back and relax as we take you on a journey through the wonderful world of coffee. Sixteen. Who consumed it first? There are multiple accounts and rumors as to who were the first people to find and consume coffee. There are reports that the Oromu people in Ethiopia noticed its wild effects first. Kaldi, a supposed legendary Ethiopian goat herd from the 9th century, is said to have seen strange, excited behavior in his goats when they ate the coffee plant's beans. The legend didn't show up in writing until 1671, though. There's also the story of Sheikh Omar, who was exiled from Mocha, a city in Yemen, and after some starvation and trial and error, boiled coffee beans to soften them to eat. That resulted in a brown liquid which he drank, and was good to go for days on end. Eventually, the people of Mocha heard of the miracle drug Omar had found, and they asked him to return to the city. Who knows if we'll ever know for sure. 15. Forget the cup. If we were anything like the African tribes that were said to be some of the first to consume coffee, we wouldn't be carrying around our mugs, nor would we be going to get our fresh cups from Starbucks. Instead, we'd be eating our energy-giving drink. The tribes would grind the coffee beans up, throw in a little bit of animal fat, and roll out balls of coffee fat that they would then eat when they needed a little pick-me-up. 14. Decaffeination did you know that there are entire plants and factories and companies dedicated to the decaffeination of coffee? Germany was actually the first country to do so, and today, they have a bunch of decaffeination plants, as well as the largest in the world. Over half of the decaf coffee that Americans drink comes first from the tropics, then makes a trip to Germany to have its caffeine removed, and is then shipped over. Caffeine is also removed in places like British Columbia, China, and other locations in Europe, and each country seems to have its own process for dragging out the energy-producing stimulant. 13. Speaking of caffeine, did you know that there's a market for the caffeine that is removed from all that coffee? That's right, soda companies like Pepsi and Coca-Cola buy it up and use it in their soda. It's also used in energy drinks and any other drink that you can think of that has a caffeine content. Bet you never realized that all that caffeine we consume originated inside a good old coffee bean, did you? 12. Espresso. Now that we've talked about decaffeinated coffee, let's take it in the complete opposite direction. Do you know what espresso means? It's an Italian word that means pressed out, and that's because of the way espresso is made. Coffee grounds are pressed, and then boiling water is forced through the grounds, and what you're left with is espresso. It's a pretty strong substitute when you consider that you definitely need a smaller amount to get the same effect as plain old coffee. But did you know it takes about three shots of it to equal the amount of one cup of said coffee? That sure makes it sound a little less intense. 11. Americans and their habits. Did you know that your regular old, everyday, average coffee drinking American spends more than $1,000 on coffee every year? The average amount spent is $1,110, and more than half of all Americans drink at least one cup of coffee per day, about 64%, although the percentage of Americans that drink coffee in general is around 83%. More people make coffee at home than buy from coffee shops, although millennials, approximately 48% of them, buy what could be considered a gourmet coffee on the daily. Americans drink more coffee than any other country when you take things as a whole, but when it's broken down per capita, they don't even come close to leading the way in coffee consumption. 10. Who drinks the most? If you're wondering what country it is that consumes the most coffee per capita, we'll let you know that it's Finland. In the United States, the amount of coffee consumed annually per person is just about 9.25 pounds worth. And while that may sound like quite a lot, consider that the average person in Finland consumes right around 26.4 pounds worth of the stimulant. So wait, does that mean the United States is in second place and the totals are that much different? No way. In fact, the United States comes 25th in coffee consumption. The top five from five to one are the Netherlands, Denmark, Iceland, Norway, and then Finland. So, you should start changing your conceptions on coffee and where you live right about now, because things are probably much, much different than you imagined. 9. Coffee Growth We just found out that Americans don't drink all that much coffee comparatively. Now we're also going to tell you that we don't really grow very much of it either. Of course, you probably already know that if you drink coffee. You don't often see the coffee you buy labeled as being grown in the USA. Only two states grow it, Hawaii and California, as Hawaii has a pretty good climate for doing so, and California, well, 
California has its hands in everything. The country that produces the most coffee? Brazil. Second place goes to Vietnam, although they only grow about half as much as Brazil does, with about 65,036 pounds in 2018, compared to Brazil's 136,025 pounds. 8. Oh, and about Brazil. Way back in 1932, Brazil was struggling to find a way to send some of their top athletes to represent the country in the Olympics. And that's when an idea struck. The government of Brazil got their 82 athletes on board a ship headed for the Los Angeles Games, and they packed 50,000 sacks of coffee on the ship with them. They sailed all the way to LA on the Itaquis, and they stopped at ports along the way to sell off their coffee. Although there were only 82 athletes on board, port officials charged $1 apiece to people leaving the ships, so the organizers only let athletes they thought had the potential for meddling off the Itaquis. 7. Coffee Fuels Creativity Honoré du Bezac, the French playwright and novelist, is said to have drunk upwards of 50 cups of coffee per day before his writing frenzies. L. Frank Baum, the writer of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, too drank lots of coffee before taking on his daily task of creating and writing down the worlds he envisioned. Paul Erdus, the famed mathematician, fueled his work with caffeine tablets and espresso, as well as some other unmentionable things. Glenn Gould, Francis Bacon, Marcel Proust, Beethoven, they all drank coffee or consumed caffeine in one form or another, before embarking on their respective tasks of creation. So, the evidence seems to point to the consumption of caffeine in coffee amplifying creativity. And we'll go with it. What creative person do you know that doesn't drink coffee? 6. Coffee Cats Now, you probably would never think that coffee could be something that could keep your cat alive longer. But looking at the two longest living cats ever, you might want to start thinking otherwise. A cat named Grandpa Rex Allen was once the longest living cat in recorded history, and he lived to be 32 years old. His owner has said that the cat got broccoli, eggs, bacon, and coffee every morning, which may sound like quite the crazy thing to feed a cat, but it apparently worked. For further proof of the coffee and breakfast food morning diet's ability to keep a cat alive, consider this. The cat that overtook Grandpa Rex Allen and lived to be the oldest cat ever was owned by the same owner, was fed the same, and got coffee every morning as well. Creme Puff lived to be 38. 5. An Attempted Ban Back in 1674, a petition was put together, called the Woman's Petition Against Coffee, although it's hard to tell if the petition was really written by women who were sick of their husbands and their coffee habits. Basically, the petition said that coffee rendered women's husbands impotent after they spent all their energy thinking and talking. A proposed ban would limit coffee drinkers to those over 60, and as you can probably tell, the petition failed. There was a real petition, it's just not clear who exactly wrote it or why. 4. Bans have been attempted other times. Yes, poor coffee has had a rough go of it. Not only did women supposedly try to ban the delicious substance, but governments have attempted to ban it as well. Some governments have cited coffee stimulating radical thinking, among other things. So they did what they could to attempt to ban it. In 1746, Sweden went a bit far and put a ban in place where citizens couldn't have or consume coffee, nor could they possess coffee paraphernalia, such as coffee cups or saucers. Like it was some kind of illicit drug or something. How comical. 3. Kopi Lua What do you know about the world's most expensive coffee? Well, there's an extra step involved in this one that may or may not turn you off of it altogether. There's a tiny animal over in Indonesia that's called an Asian palm civet. And do you remember that extra step we talked about? Kopi Lua is made from beans that have been eaten, digested, and then pooped out by the Asian palm civet, at which point the coffee farmer picks through the droppings and retrieves the beans. They're then thoroughly washed, or so everyone hopes, and sold for around $600 a pound. Who would have thought the world's most expensive coffee would be a coffee whose bean has passed through and been defecated out of an animal. 2. When a coffee pot made history Did you know that the world's first webcam was created at the University of Cambridge, and the coffee pot of which we speak was located next to the Trojan Room, which is where the webcam came to life? The Trojan Room coffee pot inspired the webcam. It was set up to save those needing coffee the disappointment of traveling to it, only to find it empty. The live feed was broadcast to all of the computers in the network, and eventually, once the machine was hooked up to the internet and others could see it, the coffee pot became famous. The pot was finally retired and sold, and the pot, which would typically go for around $50 in stores, sold for just less than $5,000 on eBay. We've learned a lot about the beverage of the gods so far, and we still have one more coffee fact to go. But first, we want to ask you, what's your favorite coffee and why? 
Give us something to try the next time we brew a pot or hit up a cafe in the comments below. 1. It can help you live longer. Of course, all the coffee drinkers know that coffee helps to give them life, but that really isn't just talk. Coffee is good for you, at least in moderation. And if you drink between 3 and 4 cups a day, you're likely to be a long-living champ. It helps cut down your chances of developing Parkinson's, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, as well as extending your life. So, if you're not already, you should probably develop a coffee habit. Unless you don't want to live longer, but that's on you. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel to always keep up with our excellent uploads. And be sure to check out this next video we know you're going to love.